Hmm, that light's bright. Uh, hello fellow YouTubers, oh, it's just me being silly. But you know what I'm like. I, um, it's been a, uh, a coolish overcast day today. Monday, October 29. Yes. And, uh, I need a shave. I do, I need a shave. Uh, I'll probably have one later. Maybe. You can hear the... So if that's a cricket or a cicada. The cicadas were really loud here a week or so ago. Ooh, they were really, really raucous. Raucous. Good word, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, you and I know that there are oodles of different languages in this world of ours. And dialects as well. But you know, there are some sounds and or utterances, if you will. It doesn't matter what language you speak, what nationality you are. Well, they virtually sound the same. Well, it's true. Uh -huh. Now, I made a list. I've got a list here. There it is. <laughs> it's upside down. And um, I've got uh, about a dozen here. It might be 13. And, uh, but there's probably more. Like, it's just that my, my feeble brain these days, you know, it just gets exhausted trying to think of things. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, for instance, or for example, laughing. <laughs> oh, mon sure. Oh, mon dieu. <laughs> that doesn't matter, does it? It sounds the same. <laughs> Whatever, wherever you are, it's laughter is laughter. Um, uh, 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 yes! <clears throat> oh, it was a tissue. A sneezing. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, um, you can't tell a person's nationality from if they laugh or sneeze and other things as well. It's the same as you can't tell the nationality of a person from a blood test. Um, crop. <laughs> Crying. <laughs> Screaming. <laughs> I'm a silly, aren't I? <laughs> oh, do you give someone the raspberry? <laughs> now, this one might turn some people off, but that goes on hundreds of millions of times a day all over the world. It's hawking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife hates it when I do that. But I reckon it's better out than in. And she said, you sound like a filthy old man. Well, thank you very much. Filthy old man indeed. Yeah, I don't know. And you burp, 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 burping, belching, you belch. Or, a smooch invite. You know. Want to have a smooch? Mm -hmm. Oh, get away with you. Go on. He comes. Mm. 
Gargle? But you didn't mean to tell you that, did you? You didn't mean me. You didn't, yeah. Now, this is a hard one for me because this is something I've had difficulty doing all my life. Yeah, whistling. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's a sigh. Yeah, well, um, you yawn. Oh, well. I just thought I'd throw that lot in for you just for something different. I think I've got tea here, you know. Yeah, I'm sure I've got a cup of tea here. Oh, yes. Cheers. Mm. Uh, that's quite nice. Mm. I suppose sipping, dear. <laughs> Did you enjoy that little bit? Um, <laughs> I really want to suck your penis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't say penis last night. <laughs> now, that would be a miracle as far as Jeremy was concerned. Anyhow, by the time Jeremy reached his front gate, he was greeted by the wonderful sight of his son and daughter as they rounded the corner across the street diagonally opposite. So he waited. Not only because he was relieved that they had arrived home safely, one down or one to go, but also because he knew that once they set foot inside the house and after they raided the refrigerator they would disappear in a flash in the inner sanctum of their respective bedroom not to be seen again until dinner time and this was a good opportunity to have a word before that happened and you wouldn't have to resort to knocking on their door and talking to them separately which he didn't like doing. Sure, this was his home. He didn't have the right to enter any room. But Adrian and Melissa weren't kids anymore. Even though he would always think them so. And they did have a right to their privacy. No. But his expectation on this day, like it would be on any day of just another day for his children to stop and say hi dad didn't happen and he found himself belomp belomping behind them as they drifted past on the way to the front door <sighs> they did greet him though saying hi when they drew level and dad as they f as they'd find it the dad as they continued on without missing a stride. Want me to read that bit again? No, I'm not going to. As if they were afraid that once their momentum ceased, they'd find it hard, if not impossible, to get it back again. Which maybe had a lot to do with the enormous bulky burden that today's school bags represented. A far cry from the vinyl zippered lightweight airline type bag he had as a kid. Jeremy could understand to a certain degree why high school students might need such massive backpacks. They'd be damned if he could see the reason why kindergarten through the sixth grade needed them. Especially the former. He'd seen the little one time and time again heading off or coming home from school laden with their gigantic bags that, when viewed from the back, gave the illusion that the bag had arms and legs and was walking itself. Poor little mites. Why the hell did a five or six year old need such a bag? He often pondered. 
What could a child so young put in a bag that big? And more importantly, if indeed those bags were full, what sort of damage was such a load doing to their growing bodies? That's a good point, Jeremy. Probably crippling, crippling them. Struth. Not only was this the first generation expected not to outlive their parent because of obesity, there was also the very real possibility they'd be suffering from some degree of malformation and chronic arthritis on a scale, on a grand scale into the bargain. What happened to the so-called paperless society? Why were kids now so overwhelmed with computer printouts, piles of text and exercise books when the potential was there to replace an old laptop computer or two? It just didn't make sense to Jeremy. But of course, it wouldn't. Paperless society indeed. I want to hear the moron bloody imbecile was who said that with the advent of computers we'll have a paperless society. We use six times the amount of paper that now than before we had computers. When they reached the front door, Melissa already had her key ready to insert in the door lock. Doing so, noting the door where Adrian was still fumbling in his pants pocket, a raw smile on her face, a typical sibling rivalry, Jeremy mused. Don't go wandering off, you two, Jeremy said, slipping out of the gumboots. I have a couple of things I need to tell you. Getting the gumboots, he entered the house, closing the door behind him. Oh, there goes the phone again. There's another post on Facebook, I suppose. I haven't, I haven't got to my settings to get rid of that. Um, many thanks to Dill for explaining how to do it. Well, we'll get around to doing it. Thank you, Dill. Um, and in the minute it took him to place the gumboots outside, near the back door and enter the kitchen, the, 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 the dynamic duo had discarded their backpacks and were standing before the open door of the refrigerator, making up their minds what to snack on. Whoa. I have a dentist appointment at 5.30, so I won't be here when your mother arrives home, Jeremy said, standing with the small of his back against the rolled edge of the sink, rubbing his stomach. Okay, Dad, Adrian said, handing his sister a tub of soft butter, jar peanut butter and strawberry jam, and a Tupperware container of cheese slices. So tell her when she asks, will you? Of course, Melissa said, placing the item on the, items on the breakfast bar. Yeah, well, I know what you two are like at times. Can't get a straight answer from either of you without it, an inquisition. Don't worry, Dad. I'll tell her as soon as she arrives home. I promise. Thank you, Melissa. And you got an upset stomach, Dad? Adrian asked placing the three-litre bottle of milk onto the sink. Uh, just a little. Nothing to be concerned about. But thanks for asking. But he was concerned. The feeling in his gut wasn't as pronounced as it had been. But he was still somewhat fearful that something untoward was going to happen. Maybe he was just being paranoid about something that wouldn't amount to anything more than a twisted ankle, if anything at all. Well, twisted ankle's no fun, I can tell you. And besides, he didn't have any control over whatever it might be, just like Ruth didn't have any control over what might or might not happen to her sister. And there was something else he hadn't thought about at the time, the one thing that should be occurred to him straight away, the piece of foil. Maybe he did just have something as simple as an upset stomach. But maybe it was compounded by inadvertently swallowing clothed in rich saliva. So that's a saliva. Maybe. Not that that thought consoled him. Not on this weird and wacky day of just another day. It didn't. Anyhow, what I was going to say is 
when you're finished all the glasses and plates and cutlery, I want you to both to bring them and every other culprit that's in your rooms out here and place the lot into the sink. Okay? Okay, Dad, no worries, Melissa said. Adrian simply replied with two thumbs up. Jeremy had already decided he wouldn't tell them of the grandfather's passing until the whole family was present. It would be better that way rather than spoiling their afternoon. And one more thing before you both disappear, Jeremy said. When you open the refrigerator door, make sure it's closed in future, will you? I always close it, Adrian protested. Me too. So it's your mother who leaves it open then? Well, well, maybe we think it's closed and it isn't, Adrian said. What's with this we? M M M M M Melissa said, glaring at her brother. I always push the door closed until it comes to a stop. Not like it would just give you the shove and hopes for the best. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I do, I do, Melissa said testily. Whatever. Ugh, you're such an aggravating person. Do you know that? Just like a mother, Jeremy thought. But of course, she would be. <laughs> That's enough, you two. Just make sure it's closed. Okay. With the kitchen to himself, uh, Jeremy wondered what he could do to fill in the hour before he set off for his appointment. He supposed he could return the gumboots to the shed strip off his socks and return to the house barefoot. But that wouldn't take any time at all. And besides, the socks could probably do with a wash anyhow. Maybe he should return the clothes hamper to the laundry even though it wouldn't hurt to leave it outside overnight to get rid of the smell of disinfectant. Poof. He could check the rain gauge, but what was the point in that? He'd have a shower on the show, but he didn't think he needed to. Not when he shaved last night, and with the drenching he'd had earlier. No, there wasn't any need to do any of those things, he decided. He'd nick a mug of tea, get rid of the cotton wool bud from his mouth, carefully brush his teeth and rinse his mouth with warm water. <laughs> Change his socks, brush his hair, slot his wallet in the rear pocket of his shorts, Place his shoes on the floor near his lounge room chair along with an umbrella. Then sit and watch the 4.30 news. And that's exactly what Jeremy did. Although not necessarily in that order. But of course, he wouldn't. <laughs> but as he sat watching the abbreviated events of the day unfold, <laughs> Even though he hadn't been particularly interested in this particular afternoon of just another day, the mug of tea he'd finished ten minutes previously had worked its way to his bladder. And he needed to urinate. But of course he would. And because it was cold on this afternoon of just another day, he realised as he was doing so that having a mug of tea before going out wasn't a particularly sensible thing to do. I know all about that, Jeremy. But of course it wouldn't be. Not when one had a proclivity for the need to urinate, or at least a feeling that couldn't be ignored every five minutes for the next hour after drinking. Still, there wasn't anything he could do about it. And there was a public toilet in the park he would pass, if by chance he got caught short because before or after the public toilet was no longer an option. Hang on, hang on. Still, there wasn't anything he could do about it. And there was a public toilet in the park he would pass. And if by chance he got caught short before or after the public toilet was no longer an option, stuck in no man's land, so to speak. And if push came to shove, he would be walking across two culverts to the open stormwater drain. Although how he managed to piss in that without being seen with all the runoff water from today's rain, was anybody's guess. <laughs> uh, 
But just after Jeremy had put on his shoes, and a moment before he stepped through the front door, and whether he really needed to, or it was purely psychological, he returned to the toilet and dribbled what he felt he wanted to dribble before he hadn't been able to. <laughs> and that final, albeit mediocre release, bolstered his confidence. <laughs> Closing and locking the front door, then donning his sunglasses, Jeremy commenced walking with a spring in his step. And as he expected and probably would have been disappointed if it hadn't, by the time he gained the footpath across the street it started to rain. Opening the umbrella and holding above his head as he walked, the image of Gene Kelly singing and dancing in the rain popped into his head. I'm singing in the rain, you're yeah, singing in the... He didn't know why that had happened because he wasn't a fan of musicals, nor could he sing and dance. Join the club. Jeremy. His father and mother had always liked musicals though, and he had seen the classic scene, so maybe it was because of that. Particularly so now that his father just passed away and was of the opinion that Singing in the Rain was one of the best musicals ever made. How strange it is, Jeremy thought as he continued walking, how something as simple as walking in the rain could prompt to recall something with such clarity that was, for all intents and purposes, irrelevant, but for the merest of association. Nothing unusual about that, of course. All gun, own gun owners are more than familiar with being found guilty of having blood on their hands by mere association after the Port Arthur Massacre of 1996. But that's what the government of this, the greatest nation on earth, to Jeremy's mind, is all about these days. If the powers that be don't like something, they ban it. Well, if they can't ban it, they tax it into oblivion. Or put a levy on it if they tax too many, th too many things so the populace don't think they're being overtaxed because a levy isn't a tax, you see. <laughs> and if by chance you happen to smoke, then you better be prepared to dig real deep in the not-too-distant future if the federal government has its way. As will be and always be, although not as deep as the smoker, if you drink and own a motor vehicle. But of course, it would be. And because Jeremy had run all those thoughts through his mind as he's walking, he began to contemplate that maybe it's about time he did some serious letter writing about the things that well and truly got up his nose these days. Trouble was, because he was concentrating so hard on future events, he wasn't doing so on present ones. Uh -oh. And when one isn't totally mindful of what's going on about them, particularly when it's wet, something is bound to happen that wouldn't have happened under normal circumstances. Very true. Like sliding on the soggy remains of a sandwich some idiot had dropped because they didn't care and you didn't see because you had your head in the clouds. And not going over because you're right yourself, but in doing so you turn 360 and instantly sidestep to maintain your balance. The consequence of which put you smack bang in the middle of a path <laughs> of a kid bowing along the footpath on a scooter wearing a raincoat. <laughs> Not that the raincoat mattered. <laughs> oh. <laughs> too, bad, too bad the same couldn't be said for the steering post and the hand grips. <laughs> The three things Jeremy wasn't thinking about at all when they packed it with his groin. <laughs> Nor after, as a matter of fact. <laughs> he was too busy holding the two things that had doubled over in agony. <laughs> oh. Oh. He was in so much pain, he didn't even have a chance to say, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> so much pain, he wasn't even able to think. Gee, <laughs> aren't I glad I left home early? <laughs> Matter of fact, he wasn't thinking about anything at all. <laughs> he knew he was in pain, <laughs> exquisitely so. 
But the fear and adultery in intensity of the pain wasn't something he had to think about. It was an instinctive primeval reaction that lit up his brain like a neon sign that didn't require any thought process whatsoever. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> mm. Like it was with the moaning and growing and crying, <laughs> the distorted face, the nausea, the open mouth gasping for air, the sputtering, the dribbling, the rage, the profanities, the not being able to stay in the one position for more than a second or two, and the not knowing that people were staring at him and probably wondering what the hell was wrong with him. <laughs> ah, the same people who stood their ground and weren't prepared to lend a hand or even bother to ask if he was all right, even though it's patently obvious he wasn't. <laughs> But if he hadn't been, uh, but if he'd been a beach whale, they'd have been swarming all over him in a frantic effort to help. All natural things, but of course they would. <laughs> I call it quits. Oh, poor Jeremy. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> pardon, pardon my expletives there. I mean, did this slip down? I was. Ah, oh, dear idea. Whoops. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Maybe I better bleep them out. Oh, to hell with it. Perfectly acceptable these days, isn't it? The F word. And I want to thank you for uh, for watching and listening. I hope you got a laugh at it because I sure as hell did. <laughs> and, and until next time. A bye for now.